Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Hope you're having a good weekend. And today we're gonna we're gonna switch gears a little bit and go from um, what well, is connected to early humans and Neanderthals and Danny Sylvans and all that good stuff, uh, archaic humans and stuff. It's, it's, it is tangentially uh, related, but this this story has more to do with oral traditions, how uh, feasible it is that they survive and human migrations within uh, continents and, and so forth and volcanic eruptions. So there's this aboriginal tale, again, by the Gundit Mara people that I've talked about. Um, I, ha- I did an aquaculture episode a few months ago regarding um, the Australian fires in, in southwest Victoria at Budge Bim National Park, uh, which is the, the center of this article as well. And they found acres and acres more of this evidence of, of these canal, these man-made canals and um, uh, fish eel traps, essentially. And these are the same people, again, who have this uh, oral history that tells of a volcanic eruption almost 40,000 years ago. Let's just take a look at the map here. So this is uh, southwest of Victoria. This is where the Gundit Mara people uh, have lived. And uh, Buj also, uh, the, it's known by its other name called Mount Eccles. E C C L E S. They they've been trying to figure out uh, scientists and geologists and stuff. They they were trying to figure out when uh, this area was active, and they, they had they came up with dates. And it, initial dates were like pretty young, fifteen thousand years, and then they pushed it back up to twenty thousand years, until finally um, this hard and basically. Uh, they, they came out with the dates of 39,600 years ago, something like that, at the Budge Bim and Tower Hill volcanic complexes. So there are two of these uh, volcanoes, and there's this activity. And it's very interesting because the lava flow, after it erupted, it changed the drainage patterns of, of the entire region. So obviously the landscape changes when you have uh, violent eruptions and such. And then it, it transformed the entire area into uh, wetlands here and then from there um, the people who were living there all bore witness this again as evidenced by the surviving of the oral history then uh, from from the wetlands from the new landscape aquaculture started to rise they developed um, as early as 6,600 years ago now it could be earlier than that but that's just to put that in perspective it's older than the commonly accepted date of the pyramids which again are the common the mainstream dates of the pyramids are probably not what they are the pyramids are probably a lot older than we think but as far as the mainstream goes the this is older than the pyramids uh this uh this aquaculture complex and then again this shows that indigenous people were not just hunter gatherers but also farmers cultivators and capable of of this type of thinking and this type of uh, strategic thinking rather and they had oral traditions as well so um, again, is this just? Are they just a, an exception to this rule uh, of these hunter gatherers back then that weren't capable of anything, or are we just learning more about hu- um, the human race uh, themselves? And are, all of them are, must be capable of this. So anyway, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So scientists are saying the, this is another. By the way, just as an aside, before we continue further. This is another example of uh, two, three, four different types of scientists getting together and really uh, trying to get to the bottom of, of the story here, what was going on. So we have people who, are, who study folklore and oral traditions and all that stuff, talking with anthropologists who are talking with geologists and volcanologists and all that stuff. So scientists, they say this t- tale told by the Aboriginal Gundit Mara people of the area may have some basis in fact. About 37,000 years ago, Budge Bim and, and another uh, nearby volcano formed through a rapid series of eruptions, um, which is true ju- from this from this article I showed here at, ta- at the Tower Hill and the Budge Bim com- complex. So these tradi- traditions, again, extending for tens of thousands of years. And why would these oral traditions even uh, stick around in the first place? We'll explore that a little bit later, but... When something like the lava flow changing the landscape and and changing the the basically your entire way of life, and who knows how long these people have lived here before? Probably ten thousand years or longer, um, because these people have continually inhabited the indigenous people of Australia have have 
continually inhabited Australia for about 50,000 plus years. That, that's the, that's the, the word they're at now at the mainstream. It could be older though, again. Um, and we do know that there are, these people do have Denny Sylvan blood. And so Denny Sylvans were probably uh, playing a huge part at some point, as well as probably some other unknown hominin. So anyway, what, when the homeland is changed in such a way where it changes the subsistence culture, not just the, the regular culture, but the subsistence, subsistence culture. So how you, you survive uh, your day-to-day -day life changes. Those are really strong contenders for, as suitable reasons why people would continue to uh, share their origin stories and pass them down from generation to generation for, oh, geez, that's a long time, almost 40,000 years, right? <laughs> that's a long time. So uh, it's not clear how long the Gunditmara have lived in the southwest corner of Victoria. Um, the earliest dates, the earliest occupation dates that are widely accepted are 13,000 years. But I don't know. I think it's way more than that um, for, for this reason right here. So back in the 1940s, this geologist Aaron Machen at the University of Melbourne. So th he found a stone axe in the regions uh, near the Tower Hill volcano basically in that volcano complex there. The axe was found uh, buried beneath the volcanic rocks. So you have volcanic rocks that, let's say, are 38,000 years old. Let's just say that. You find an axe underneath it. So there were people living to build axes before the eruption happened. So that right there is a smoking gun that people definitely were living uh, there. And it, weren't, it wasn't just sparse. Uh, sparsely populated people. It was actually um, a, a significant amount of people, I would say. Those rocks and the rocks of Bujbim, again, uh, 40 kilometers to the northwest, were dated. So basically what they used was uh, they measured the decay of potassium-40 into argon-40 over time. And again, they get these uh, dates, uh, 37,000 years, 38,000 years. Uh, I've read different things, 38,600, 39,600, 36,900. Uh, there are d different um, dates, but that's basically more or less the, the timeline there. So let's just call it uh, 37,000 years ago, um, this this erupts, and then it just leaves this, I guess you can call it a scar, but this, this memory, this lasting memory uh, throughout the ages. Very interesting stuff. The sudden dual eruptions may have made a big impression on the humans who were living in that area at the time. Uh, there have been uh, no other large volcanic, volcanic eruptions in the area in the intervening years. So um, let's just look at the story real quick. I was just burying the lead here. So here's the story. Long ago, four giant beings arrived in Southeast Australia. Okay, so right there, four giant beings. That could be anything, right? That That could, for me... That I immediately start thinking about different types of uh, uh, humans. That's what I think. Uh, three strode out to other parts of the continent, but one crouched in place. His body transformed into a volcano called Budge Bim, and his teeth became the lava the volcano spat out. And that is basically the, the story in a nutshell. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in that, in that short, short uh, story. So who could these other three be? Could it, could, could those other three giants be um, just other branches of humanity? Could they be a Denisovan and, and a Neanderthal, maybe even a, a, a type of Erectus? I don't know. Um, but that, that's a very peculiar uh, uh, story. Um, and then the, one, the other giant that crouches down and then becomes Budge Bim, that could have a ton of meanings. But anyway, that, that story, that those details were passed down for thousands and thousands of years. So, um, and, and it must have been uh, referring to the Budge Bim and the Tower Hill uh, volcanic activity for close to 40,000 years ago uh, because there were no real intervening uh, volcanic eruptions since then that, that would leave a mark like this. So I think it's very uh, highly likely that the two events are being referred to are the same. Um, so uh, here's this other uh, part of the study. Patrick Nunn, who's a geographer, uh, he authored a st or co-authored a study rather, suggesting 21 communities around Australia have been independently kept alive 
stories describing an episode of sea level rise that drowned parts of the coast. So those stories might be around 7,000 years old, but the Gundet Mara story would be more than five times years old. So so I know these are different stories and these are different uh, oral traditions that are being passed down. And 7,000 years is definitely not 40,000 years or so. But um, it, it just... It's, it just provides more credence to the fact that, that people, especially people among the aboriginals of Australia, they like their oral stories. They, they sh- it's not an unheard of thing. Oral traditions do happen. Uh, the stories are passed down from generation to generation and are largely kept intact, uh, uh, truth-wise. Uh, I mean, in, in terms of the re- realistic truth. So if a story and this is a conservative estimate, could be passed around for 7,000 years, then why couldn't it be passed uh, around for 40,000 years or 50,000 years? Um, The only real reason that it wouldn't pass down is is if somehow the culture would be broken or or interrupted, if there was a cataclysmic event that forced people out or a climate climate shift that would force people out that would interrupt that... uh, uh, unbroken a uh, chain of of narration essentially uh, but there is an evidence that australia uh, p- the people of australia anyway occupied the same place for almost 50,000 years so if that were true then it's not really far fetched that they would have all these uh, oral traditions that that are so deeply rooted in their history and have survived to this day so that's why i think um uh, reporters, uh, scientists, and whoever it is that, that's involved, they do develop these contacts with chieftains and uh, these local tribesmen because they hold, uh, they probably hold so much information that is just being swept under the rug that I think it's just a c- completely underutilized and under underestimated uh, uh, part of the equation when you're trying to get to uh, truth, especially the truth of, of the human past. Um, so I, I highly, I, I would highly recommend any any aspiring scientists out there to get to get a hold of your local chieftain and just pick their brain on what was going on, origin stories, uh, even uh, politics and genetic movements, all that stuff. Just just try to listen to the entire story and then just uh, compare it with other studies and, and other stories from other continents and just see if there's any parallels. Uh, the Gundit Mara already suspected their story had been kept alive by their ancestors for a very long time, but they appreciate any scientific evidence that can provide a sense of exactly how long. So again, they are open to working with scientists. I know there are other indigenous um, uh, people, not maybe not in Australia, but uh, in like North America for sure, um, in other parts of the world, Canada, that, that don't really want to work with uh, scientists for, for obvious reasons. Um, but at least the relationship on Australia is still there. And I think th- this is huge. This is huge uh, information, just not just because of the revelation that there was 40,000 uh, years ago, there was a volcanic activity, or even the fact that there were people living before then 50,000 plus years ago. I think the, the silver lining here that uh, people could take from this article is the, the way that cultural oral traditions should not be underestimated and it's definitely possible and it's been happening even in in uh the ancient greek socrates he always talked about oral traditions and we're talking about the 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 beginnings of western civilization the ancient greeks uh they before they started writing stuff down there there were oral traditions same thing with the egyptians um so again this is not an unheard of thing it's actually the normal thing to do was to have uh, oral traditions writing stuff down wasn't necessarily the best idea to ancient people because they they there were they had certain reservations about writing stuff down because the written word could be misconstrued it could be altered it could be misinterpreted but with an oral tradition it's a little bit different and it's not like uh, some people think, oh, what if they just forget? It's like a game of telephone. It's messed up. Well, there were certain people who were qualified to uh, tell the oral tradition. You had to train to do it for the most part. It was Sometimes it was encoded in a song, and you had to get the lyrics correct, and the lyrics would tell you exactly what happened. And this is true in Hawaii, in the, in, um, the native Hawaiians. 
they had certain people who were tasked. Their only task in the community was to recite the songs and recite the stories. And if they got, if they told the story wrong, if they misremembered certain parts, then there were some consequences there. There were steep consequences. And, and I think that's just one example. There, there are many other examples of oral traditions and, peop and people taking it very seriously. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this article. I hope you guys have a good weekend. I hope this stuff inspires you. Please leave a comment if you have any other uh, examples of oral traditions being spread, the importance of oral traditions, maybe if there are any oral traditions now that you know of, maybe you come from a culture that has oral traditions, please share your story. Uh, let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later.